Welcome to Catching Up with Council. I'm your host, Leah Haslidge, and today we're catching up with Ward 17 Councilman Marty Kane. Welcome, Marty. Thank you. Good morning. So tell us first about your ward and the neighborhoods it represents and when you got elected. Yes. So Ward 17 is uh, basically comprised of West Park and the Cam's Corners neighborhood. It's, it borders the cities of Lakewood, Fairview Park, and Brook Park. Uh, also includes the airport. Um, and I have been on council since 2007. So this is 11 years. Did you know that you always want to be in politics and in government? Um, not really. I mean, I, I, I always have and do love uh, my neighborhood, right? I, I did grow up there and now raising my family there. So uh, I have great pride in the city and anything I can do to make it better uh, and to um, just improve it this opportunity came along and I jumped at it. So it's been a privilege to serve and uh, 11 good years. Can you give us a brief background on you growing up in Cleveland and in Ward 17? Um, yeah, sure. I was, uh, I mean, Bradgate Avenue, uh, Granton Avenue to Bradgate Avenue right there in, in West Park uh, off of Rocky River Drive near Lorraine. Um, grew up mostly south of Lorraine right on the, usually it's parish based, so right on the border of Our Lady of Angels and St. Pat's Parish. Uh, I'm an OLA guy, um, and uh, my kids have been, three are out now, but uh, it's a great place. It's a family-oriented, uh, public service-oriented community um, with just a great place to, to walk, to shop, to, um, to live. I mean, it's there's not a lot of places like it, I like to say, uh, anymore because it's, it's just a little bit of old school uh, where everybody takes care of one another and keeps an eye on each other. And uh, I got yelled at by everybody on the street, and hopefully there's uh, <laughs> neighbors of mine yelling at my kids when they're doing something they shouldn't be. But um, it's a great place to live still today, and, and my dad was on council in the 70s. Uh, he was a local attorney and had a brief stint in the same chambers that I now walk in. Uh, I have brothers that are in the Division of Public Safety, uh, which I'm very proud of them and their service. Uh, my sister is not too far over the bridge in Fairview, but um, I think I like to say that our family is really committed to West Park and the city of Cleveland, and, and I think our service collectively has is, is demonstrated that. It's nice to see that you followed in the family footsteps. Yeah, um, I really never thought it would happen. I never really had an interest too much in it. Uh, I like to work. Uh, I don't like to be on camera that much. No offense, <laughs> Leah. Uh, but, um, you know, it's worked out. We've gone through some rough times. We've gone through some unbelievably great times. And uh, every day is an adventure. So any job you can say that you, you enjoy getting up and going to every yeah. day is a job that you should try to keep. But again, it's not... It doesn't belong to me. I, I fully realize that uh, that it's anybody's seat at anybody's time, and I, it's a privilege to serve at this time in the city of Cleveland. When you're talking about family-oriented and, and the community aspect, you guys have a lot of great long-standing events, like uh, the Hooli and Cam's Corner right. and the cinema in Impet Park all throughout the summer, the farmer's markets, the 4th of July parade. Talk to us about these long-standing events that you guys host and, you know, what attributes it to keeping that community feel and aspect? Um, yeah, I mean, they are uh, significant events that go on kind of year-round, but mostly in the in the kinder weather months. Uh, but the Hooli is a big one, and the Hooli began as a ribbon cutting for our streetscape. Luckily, when I first came in, uh, Mayor Jackson and the administration had, had held up to their promises of a, a streetscape, a significant investment in our, in our Lorraine Avenue streetscape. And once that was done, um, in 2009, we had a ribbon cutting and decided to turn it into an all-day uh, welcome back to the neighborhood, welcome uh, kind of a, a reinvention of Lorraine Avenue at Cam's Corners. And we continue that on today, uh, on the first Saturday of May. We are looking at changing the date this year. Hopefully with uh, Director Cox and with Isha Hand, the manager of special events, we can get a little better, better weather. Um, but uh, the Hooli is really just a get back outside after the weather in May or early June. Uh, and remember that we have great places to shop and, and to eat and to uh, socialize right here within walking distance of your house. Asphalt cinema is a funny story because when I first came in in 2007, we actually had it on asphalt in the parking lot behind um, right the south side of Lorraine, Walgreens, uh, West Park stations there. Uh, and then probably about 
nine years ago, it was we couldn't do it anymore because it's a it's a uh, evening event on the weekend and the parking lot was full. Yeah. So when I came in, there was nobody parking there because there were no businesses really. There was no activity in the evening. We had it on the asphalt. Then we moved it to the Y for a couple of years, uh, the West Park YMCA, last family Y in the city. Uh, I always got to plug the Y because they're a great partner of ours and very important to our community. Uh, and then finally, after that, a uh, couple of years there, we're now at Impet Park on grass, but we still call it the Asphalt Cinema. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think these events lead to keeping that community atmosphere and people connected? I mean, anytime you get people out of the house and, and seeing um, neighbors either they haven't seen in a while or meeting new neighbors is important. I mean, that's a community and that's, it's who we are, it's what we do. Uh, we try to take care of each other and take pride in, in what we know is a good thing. Um, we have great housing stock, we have great houses, we have great neighbors, we have people who care about their community and it's just an opportunity to get out and kind of celebrate it. Whether you're watching a movie or eating a burger or uh, shopping at the farmer's market like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. It's, uh, it's anything you can do to get people out and, and socially active um, benefits the community. You talked about Camp's Corner with the Hooli, and there had been quite a bit of vacant stores in there, but a lot of new development is happening, a lot of new places are moving in. Talk to us about how the business district there is growing. Yeah, I mean, we've had um, successes recently with more destination retail for a while there when things, you know, actually before the streetscape and before kind of the revitalization of our retail corridor, uh, it was predominantly bars, you know, I mean, that's, that's what it, those are the only things that made it. Small businesses suffered when the economy suffers. And now we're rebounding with these um, cool destination retail and restaurants, uh, only in Klee, uh, clothing company right there at Cam's, you know, uh, Hatfield's Good Grub, which is a barbecue joint that people come from all over to see, along with our traditionals that made it through. You know, Starship Earth has, has costumes that people drive from Pittsburgh to shop yeah. for, or drive from all over, I should say. Shouldn't mention Pittsburgh, probably. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's an exciting time. Um, it's, it's all about the neighborhood and the support of the small businesses. Because if they don't shop there, if they don't walk up there and buy something or patronize those local small businesses, they're not going to make it. So uh, it's a huge risk and a huge gamble on one little neighborhood in the city. So I give small business owners all the credit in the world. Um, it's, a, it's a hard grind yeah. and for them to take a risk on, on Ward 17 or Cam's Corners is uh, commendable and, and certainly appreciated by me and my family who shops quite a bit. Shop local is important. Oh yeah. yeah. It's, it's what brings, especially when you have these traditional retail corridors. I mean yeah. you don't have a lot of parking. Parking's always an issue so you need people to find other means to get there and yeah. to buy a sandwich or a scarf or a t-shirt or a coffee mug. Um, you know or food, anything, is uh, get your shoes shined and fixed up at Geno, 50 years at Cam's Corners. Um, so those are the things that keep it moving and thriving and, and you, can't, um, you can't put them all in the middle of one of our neighborhoods. It's those small mom and pop destination retail that is the revitalization of our neighborhoods. And keeps the money in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah it does and, and that's certainly important. Now, you have a lot of great schools in Ward 17. Talk to us about what's developing there, what's going on with our schools. Uh, well, we're going through an interesting conversation right now about Douglas MacArthur and Valley View with some of the state funding issues. Um, so we haven't really nailed that down yet. We're hoping to get a new Douglas MacArthur and Valley View school, which are the same sex academies. We're, we're lucky to have the all girls, uh, Douglas MacArthur over off of Puritas uh, on Valley Side, and then the Valley View school off the drive on Valley View. Um, is the boys same-sex academy. They're old schools, they don't fit, uh, they were built for a different use. So uh, back when the levy passed we had some conversations about new schools mm -hmm. at those locations and that's something that's that's desperately needed and hopefully we'll continue the conversation and it'll end, uh, it'll end well for us. Um, Newton E. Baker School of the Arts is wonderful, Riverside, mm -hmm. Clara Wastrop, I mean I, I, I can't, the staff um, the teachers, the principals, the parents, um, they're committed, you know, and, and you go to these open houses and you go to these different events at these schools and it's, it's great to see. Um, a lot of it has to do with 
longevity of the teachers, right? We have teachers who love to teach at those schools. Yeah. And they come back and they work very, very hard every single day. Uh, but you can't really talk about schools in West Park without mentioning we have two solid parochial schools with Our Lady of Angels and St. Mark's. We have great charter partners uh, with West Park, the Constellation partners at, at the old St. Pat's and, uh, and right there on, on Lorraine Avenue. Uh, St. Joseph Academy, the only parochial all-girls school in yeah. the city, is beyond capacity and looking to expand. Yeah. Um, and they serve a, a number of Cleveland girls. And, and they're really transforming these young women into future leaders. And the things that they're doing um, with science and technology, with leadership, with service mission trips, um, is amazing. And uh, that's right there on Rocky River Drive also. And, um, Leading the huge camps. Huge partner of ours and an important partner in our neighborhood. As you know, you talk schools, you talk Fairview Hospital, you know, those are all part of the puzzle, yeah. the big puzzle, the airport. Um, that's what a community is, and you need a little bit of everything to work together to make people want to stay. And it seems like a lot of your residents have been longtime residents, they want to stay. Yeah. Um, Yes, I would agree with that, but we also have exciting young people with families choosing to, to live in West Park and to move in. And, um, you know, the two biggest things and every time, everything I do is about safety in schools, right? If it's not safe, you're not going to live here. Right. If you don't have an educational opportunity for your child, you're gone. Mm -hmm. So uh, work closely with Commander Faye. He's been, he's been great to work with and Chief Williams um, and the mayor and, and Director McGrath. But uh, safety in schools are to, you know, city services and basic city services are tremendously important and we work regularly every day, all day, potholes and trees and, and, and housing conditions and things like that. But if, if you don't feel safe or you don't feel as if you have an opportunity to educate your child, you're gonna make choices right. that are important to your family and, and sometimes that's not uh, West Park or the city of Cleveland. So uh, two big focuses and, and the long term Neighbors are great, right? Yeah. I, it's amazing somebody who's grown up there and been there my whole life, meet somebody new every week, right? You get a phone call and you say, oh, I'll be over on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, and you get to sit in their living room and, and hear a story and try to help them, um, and you had no idea. So it's a cool, it's a, it's a really neat opportunity for me in a neighborhood that I love with uh, great people, new and old. Your ward seems to have uh, escaped a lot of the foreclosure crisis that's hit Cleveland <clears> pretty <throat> hard. Yeah. And Western Reserve Land Conservancy shows that West Park area housing stock is solid in the lowest numbers of vacant and abandoned homes. What do you think attributes to those numbers? Uh, well, it was a rough road. I mean, not like some neighborhoods in the city of Cleveland because, you know, once the banks uh, foreclosed, you know, it was a, it was a group effort with Cam's Corners Development Corporation, with myself, with some of our partners to, to really convince these banks that you don't have to hold this on your books as a negative because it's 44111 or 44135. Uh, so it took a lot to research, follow through, um, through the courts to contact these banks and say, you know, you have value here. Um, and, and we were successful in, in convincing a lot of them to put them on the market. And we, we convened groups of realtors and, and title companies to try to talk to these banks that are holding on to packages of houses in our neighborhoods that um, everybody knows it only takes one house. Right. And, and once that one house goes, it's a, it's a slippery slope. So um, that was a big part of it. We did have a number of foreclosures and, and walkaways for being underwater, but uh, the community had to get together and make sure that something positive happened there. Um, the other thing is the housing stock. They're well-built homes on beautiful tree-lined streets, and a lot of them. I mean, we have a mix of everything, um, but that had a, a lot to do with it, and, and I have seen the Land Conservancy study and appreciate it because it's true. I mean, we have a great opportunity for well-built homes on safe streets with good schools and some shopping around the corner and, and a place to go to church, and that's, that's really important. Now you've chaired Council's Charter Review Committee. Tell us a little bit about what that is and That's what's fine. happening with it. Uh, so Charter Review, uh, as of 2008, was the last time the Charter Review Commission convened, and one of the recommendations was to go from 20 years to 10 years. So 
Uh, that went to the voters and it passed and here we are in 2018. So at the beginning of the year, um, the council president put out a notice to any citizens interested and, and I was interested. Uh, and a, a number of my colleagues were also interested, but even more importantly, we're just citizens who wanted to get involved and wanted to learn more and volunteer their time and energy and resources to updating our charter, taking a look at our charter, understanding our charter. So we met every two weeks um, since I think probably March, April, uh, and we're actually wrapping up now with the charter. It's not really an exciting document, you know, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> kind of like the Ohio Revised Code. It's kind of, it's, there's legalese, there's technical, uh, technical parts of it that you have to talk through. So uh, I've enjoyed it. I was asked to chair it. Um, I don't know why, but uh, I was, and I've enjoyed it. Uh, just between not only my colleagues, some that have been much longer than I have, and some that are, are brand new, to, um, to, to, take a deep dive into our charter and understand each individual section. Um, staff has been great with uh, the Deputy Clerk Alan Dreyer and, and Rachel Nigro-Scalish from the law, our, our law department. Um, and anyhow, we're wrapping up hopefully this month um, with making recommendations to the council president for uh, a number of different issues on different chapters and sections to put to the voters to, to hopefully make it a better, more applicable document to today's Cleveland. Um, and that's the purpose of Charter Review. And uh, I'm hoping we'll, we'll wrap that up here in the next couple of weeks. Bring it more up to the times. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there's still, there's always gonna be antiquated language and, and uh, you know, references to positions that don't match how we should do it. But you always have to take into consideration, you're gonna put this to the voters, right? And there's a tremendous amount of resources that goes into that. Mm -hmm. Uh, for a simple name change, is that that important at this time in the city? Or should we be tackling the bigger issues and, and more for, focus on um, bringing that section up to, maybe not just a word or a reference that, that doesn't fit? Um, so it's a, it's a balance and you have, to, you have to just weigh all the different considerations before making, an, a, making a proposal and a recommendation to council um, to put it on the ballot. So I, I, I commend all of the commission members. They've been great. Um, they've added tremendous value to the process, which, which I appreciate. What for you is the best part of being a part of city council and representing your ward? Um, the best part, I, I, it's the people. You know, I, I, I enjoy uh, meeting new people. I enjoy uh, finding people who care about the city uh, and care about our future and the future of our children and what's the city going to look like when, when we're gone, right? I know that uh, I'm a temporary placeholder in this seat. I'm proud and privileged to serve, but how can I make it better for 10, 15 years from now? Um, I would say that that is the best, but also the city hall work. I enjoy the legislation. Uh, I enjoy uh, the administration and working closely with Mayor Jackson and, and, and his team. We don't always agree. We don't always see eye to eye, uh, but that's part of the process. And they hopefully know me well enough now after 11 years to, it's not personal. I'm, I'm not fighting for me. I'm fighting for the 27,000 people that I'm proud to represent. And I think most of the administration realizes that, you know, it's, it's a constant struggle, but, um, it's important, and, and I find that to be rewarding, both professionally and personally, uh, to be able to effectively communicate on behalf of a bigger uh, group of people, a bigger entity, a bigger uh, world that, than just Marty Kane. On the other side of the coin, what's the hardest part? Same. Yeah. You know, it's the yeah. same. It, it, it's, uh, it's banging your head against the wall about a certain issue that you can't get resolved because there's so many big issues in a city of our size right. uh, that's gone through the things that we've gone through. Um, it's frustrating uh, for the little things that, that maybe you can't, I can't do myself, um, so I have to rely on certain departments or divisions to get it done, and it might not be a priority to them to the same level it is with me. So that's the uh, hard part. It's frustrating, but you realize that you have to do it. 
and and it's not you just can't crawl in the corner and you know cry about it you got to keep working and try to make it a priority for whoever this is whatever department it is or issue it is you have yeah. to keep pushing that uh pushing the agenda forward so kind of both the same the, yeah. the biggest benefits and the biggest challenges anything else you think viewers should know <clears throat> about ward 17 you know what it, it's it really is a great place and and i've never 11 years i've never tried to never speak ill of the community I represent. That's not who I am. Um, I, it, it's, it, it has wonderful people. It has great uh, opportunities and parks and our rec center. Uh, yeah. Because you do, I mean, you do have a really, it seems like a big close-knit family. The, well, the whole neighborhood, well, the, and there's challenges. I mean, we have problems. We have crime. We have vacant homes. We have a large vacant uh, retail structure at the corner of 150th and Lorraine that we have to work closely, but I'm not, I don't focus on that. I work towards bettering it. I work towards solving it, but I don't let it define us. No singular event or bad thing um, can, can take away who we are and what we are as a community and as a city. And we are in the city of Cleveland. We're all Clevelanders. Yeah. It's one town, no matter what neighborhood or ward number you have. Um, so it's just always important for me to focus on the positives. Uh, I'm not going to... Um, degrade the community I represent in order to get some attention for a specific issue. Uh, because again, it's important to, to be bigger than that and mm -hmm. to fight for the greater good, which we have a great town. We have great things happening from, from corner to corner and of course in the middle. Um, there's a lot of cool things going on. And if every Clevelander would just take a, a minute to embrace it and think about it, and then work towards that vacant house down the street and getting it cleaned up and work with us to address some of the many um, issues we have with, with different city services and, and quality of life issues. It takes all of us and we can all pitch in. Um, and that's what makes a difference. And back to the original question, that's, what, uh, I'm, that's why I remain proud to, to represent Ward 17. A lot of the stuff we handle, you know, and we take care of. And um, from park cleanups to cemetery cleanups to Lorraine Avenue, you know, it, it's, it's great um, to have partners who care as much as you do. Right. Uh, maybe not monetarily, but time and energy and, and just making a difference every single day to, to keep it a community where you're, you're just proud to live. How can people get more information on Ward 17? Um, we do. The Development Corporation is a big conduit for me to get information out. Um, Camps Corners Development Corporation does a lot of the social media. Mm -hmm. I don't. Um, not a big uh, social media guy. So Cam's Corners Development Corporation is probably one. Uh, newsletters and, and different communiques through the city of Cleveland's okay. website, you know, because it's not just Ward 17. It's, it's, a, it's a big picture. And any event in Ward 16 or Ward 1, right, yeah. is, an, is an opportunity for yeah. a Clevelander to get out there and meet somebody new and to explore a new neighborhood and enjoy all the good things that we have uh, throughout the city. So, uh, but as a number one resource, I would say KCDC. Thank you so much, Councilman Kane, for being here. It was a joy to have you no, in the studio. No, thank you, Leah. It was a pleasure uh, sitting down and talking with you today. We've learned a lot about you and your ward, and all this information will also be on our website, tv20cleveland.com, so check it out. We'll have everything there. And thank you so much for watching Catching Up with Council. I'm Leah Hasledge. Until next time.